before we went live, we were talking about the hair aspect of survivorship, oh, which to women is such an important thing because we love our hair. It's a little crown, right? Yeah. And so when we have like three hairs that are super thin and they're scared to like come out, they're like, can we come out? We're scared because that thing is just destroying them, right? And and then when it starts growing, it's such a beautiful process. And I was telling you, I let it grow. I've, I haven't cut it in almost three years. I finished chemo in 2021, December 2021. Wow. And I haven't, and look how long, but you see when you're uh, bald, mm -hmm. it grows in different, it's almost like layered naturally. Yeah. Because it grows, you know, like from the get go. It's not like you got a haircut and then it grows. It's just, and I'm going to get a haircut next week. I'm so excited. I'm like, so excited for you. You need to take pictures. It's like baby's first haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is. You do become a newborn, don't you? Yeah. No, it's a whole new you. We did, we did something about your 2.0, which I found a more helpful framework than I have been completely destroyed. And now I'm like nothing. It was yes. easier to be like, oh, this is just Leanna 2.0. Um, I think it was a healthier way to think about it, but <laughs> it's yes. rebuild is hard and hair is a big part of that. I had never like cared about my hair, but I've been so like emotionally, like I'm just, I'm much more like emotionally involved with my hair than I ever have been in my whole life. Oh no, really? Well, just because it like looks like it looks weird. It looks weird right now. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. Actually, I like it. It's growing um, beautifully. It's growing very healthy. My favorite was the buzz cut. I oh my really God, fellas, give us the tea. Cut. What did you do when as soon as you like started growing? Um, I did a lot of barber shops because wow. I was like, fuck it. When can I go to a barber shop? This sounds like fun. So I got like like high and tight, like just, I had so many different looks and nice. all of the things that I never could have tried before. And I did like, you know, half shaved, <laughs> like a lot. That's so fun. So you went like the opposite way. I went more the conserve the hair, let it grow. And you went like, screw it. I'm just going to do whatever I want with it. And I'm going to try different things. Well, why not? I mean, when we, when I got wigs, people are like, oh, you can get a wig that looks just like your hair. I'm like, that's boring. <laughs> like, so I had a rainbow mullet. I had like green for St. Patrick's Day, a green yes. wig during the South Boston St. Patrick's Day parade is like. Love, love. And it's so fun. I did the same thing. My first wig, I went to a place. It was the Presbyterian Hospital where they gave away wigs, right? We get a lot of free stuff when we have cancer. Right. So I went with my friend that I was telling you about that we're, we're always, she took care of me and we were all, always laughing like hyenas, right? And so I tried several blonde ones and I was like, I look like a Karen and I'm Latina. <laughs> it's like, what the, no, it was, they were awful. I'm serious. Oh, wow. My hair was gorgeous. It was like natural, no extensions, long blonde, fake blonde, obviously, because yeah. my hair is really black. But it was gorgeous. And then, you know, I was like trying blonde uh, wigs and they were all horrific. And so I saw a pink one with like green and yellow strands. And I was like, I want that one. So I put it on and I came out. My friend was like, oh, she was blown away. She was like, oh, my God, that's the perfect wig for you. Oh, and it's like so much more fun. Like, why? Yeah. I have sent a lot of uh, Thanks Cancer Care packages. And yeah. A lot of people have gotten my like <laughs> crazy <laughs> ice blue wig that makes you look like an anime character. I'm like, yes, yeah, <laughs> this is what you need to try. <laughs> oh, I know. I ordered um, a green one from Amazon, and I did not look good with the green one. I don't know if maybe my skin is too light. It's like light olive, so it just kind of like blended. Yeah. It was weird. It was weird. But I'm sure you look, you look like you would look great with a green wig. I have a, I have an alt identity on uh, Twitter where I have a Ooh. picture of all of my looks. My alt identity is the cancer maven because there's like things I can't say as thanks cancer because thanks cancer has to be like kind and patient and like totally yes compassionate and can't call people bitches. But <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> 
anyway, but yeah, I do have, I'll send it to you after this because I looked amazing in all of my looks. I love that. I love that. Yes. And what is, tell me the, can, can we put up the name of the X? Oh yeah. It's a uh, cancer maven. Cancer maven. Okay. I'm typing because and I am the engineer also. Good. I tried to get, um, I call myself the number one cancer liberty because I tried to get the term cancer liberty, not cancer influencer, cancer liberty, because it's so funny. I love that. That's yeah, so funny. It hasn't caught on yet, but I did get the term doctor to catch on, like an oncologist, donk, doctor. No. <laughs> and I talked to a lot of oncologists in my life because I work in oncology. Yes. Anyway, so I'm spreading it. It's going to be a thing. Everyone's going to be like, oh, yeah, my doctor. Oh, uh, my doctor. I love that. Oh my God, my! I'm gonna put it here right now. Do. Oh my God, I'm gonna add the banner. My doctor. <laughs> I've asked your doctor about this. I also I tried to get my radiation oncologist. I called her my radonka donk, and she did not like that. No. But that could have just been her, like. <laughs> yeah, maybe she didn't have a sense of humor. Some of these doctors don't have a sense of humor, and it's like you crack a joke, and then like. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's kind of funnier when people don't have a sense of humor. Yeah. Like one time I brought in um, a water bottle, but it was an old whiskey bottle. Yes. And uh, my care team was like, ah, it was like doing chemo and drinking out of this. Anyway, they did not think that was as funny as I was. I did. I love that. And see, having you in that infusion room was probably so fun. I, I wish that we would have done chemo at the same time. I know. I was, oh my God, it would have been so fun. We would have like made everybody dance. I was always like dancing in my chair, like hip hop. And, and I was like ratchet music. I was listening to ratchet music. So the younger nurses were like, she's jamming. And the last chemo girl, I had no energy. I was like this. You know how it is. Like the last yeah. one is the one that you're like, I almost told my doctor, like, can we skip number six? Because I am pooped. I can't literally and figuratively. Yeah. I'm like, I just can't do, I don't think I can, I can do it anymore. And uh, so I was sorry, but all throughout, like the other five girl, I was jamming. And when I rang the bell, I was twerking. I was like, hey, <laughs> you know, like, no, no, no. it's like not safe for work. Totally not safe for work. I am not safe for work. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I agree with that. <laughs> I always started out high energy, but then over the course of the appointment, it's like, yeah, my brother said he could see my energy like draining out of me. Yes, a hundred percent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And a couple of times I came dressed up. One time I wore a unicorn onesie. No. It's easy to access the fort, though, that way, right? Yes! Yeah. Why not? This is, like, so dumb, the whole thing. The whole I love thing. it. But, yeah, it's so dumb. But that's, like, the moments of fun that we have during this journey, you know? Oh. If you see, and, the and, and you know, every it's, cancer is awful, and, like, the infusions are terrible. But, you know, everybody was so, like, down, and... and I felt like, come on, let's party, you know, let's just have fun. I know we're going through shit, but yeah, yeah, uh, I know, I know. Well, and my first, my first like survivorship seminar after cancer, yes. I went to this group that's like facing forward after breast cancer. Yes. And everyone in that room was like, blah, 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 blah. and that was energy the whole time. And there was one other person who is a lunatic who is my was my co-host for my podcast. And yeah. she and I like immediately, because we're both like super high energy. Yes. So I think that it's not as important, I would say, while you're going through you have so much going on when you're going through active treatment. Yes. But after active treatment, like you need to find someone who matches your freak. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. You and I need to keep stay connected because we're like the same energy, insane, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, and you have like this whole new reality that like you cannot count on your friends and family who have supported you through cancer treatment yeah. in this like new reality that you find yourself in. You need someone because 
like I was able to talk to this person. Her name's Mimi, which yes. I thought was funny because it was like I'm talking to me, me. Mimi. <laughs> Myself, but the, I would call her up and I'd be like, I really want to die right now. And she's like, yeah, same girl, same. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like, just like all of those uncomfortable feelings that you yes. have or like yes. being a burden on other people. Yes. Or like, what even is healing or reality or like, am I making progress? Like you need someone who's been through it and who yes. understands like your level of. A hundred percent. 